All right. Uh, for those who don't know, I feel like I need to give some for those who aren't that well versed. Oli Hernes, legendary former player, manager, sausage factory owner, Everything. genius, credited with creating the modern Bayern. Also got into some trouble a while course, back yeah, for yeah. not paying all of his taxes. Yeah, yeah, the man who bought Pep Guardiola to the club. He officially has no role at Bayern, but Jan, he's the man behind the scenes. He's got his people high up in the organization. Um, I think Khan and Brazo, not necessarily his people. Now they're back. Sorry, now they're gone. Although it's not entirely 100% a win because there's a lot of rumors that Karl Heinz Rummenigge, another legendary former president, former former superstar yeah, yeah, center yeah. forward, uh, somebody who worked with Hernes, didn't always see eye to eye with Hernes. He's on his way back in. So I, are they just getting the old gang back together? Yes, they are. And uh, Ole Hernes got a kind of former role and he's, sit, he's sitting in the Aufsichtsrat with the su supervisory board of, of Bayern. But now he's getting his people together again. And I think that Ole Hernes, and as you said it at the beginning, he is, he is the he, this is his club. He's been there since he was 27, 28, end of 70s. This is his club. He is the Don Corleone. He is everything at this club. So what I think that the big mistake Uli Hoeneß did was that if you bring in a coach, if you bring in a head of sport, the, the skill to be a former player is important because of identity, because of loyalty, and understand the culture of the club, fine. But I think that the big mistake is when you bring in a CEO of a club, because that is nothing to do, it's a sport as well, but it's a being the head of one of the biggest brands in Germany. And to bring in Oliver Kahn, just on the skill that he took some business courses, that he that he, he was a former player, that was not good enough. And I think that Uli Hoeneß realized that. Bratzo, you could do ahead of sport. You would say, was he qualified for doing that? But still, that happened in football, that you put in head of sport that has been at the club. But it was a big mistake to, to get Oliver Kahn. He was not good enough. And it was not, not a way that he could fill that role. And Uli Hoeneß realized that. Uli Hoeneß hasn't said a word for ages. The only thing he did was to come in and talk to Tuchel for 20 minutes underground with the whole press there. You say it best when you say nothing at all. And that we all <laughs> know that that was gone. That Oliver Kahn was gone uh, after uh, we saw that. And he was not a popular among the employees uh, at the club. Uh, he... It will be difficult for any CEO coming after Ole Hernes, but I don't think that the approach Oliver Kahn did to the job was right. And then that it's, I've said many times the last couple of days, that is the name of the game. Then you have to go. Yeah, it's not a great moment for legendary Bayern goalkeepers between Kahn and I, I wouldn't, I don't know where Manuel Neuer's, what his future yeah. is looking like uh, either, frankly, at this point, but but it's been a bad season. Uh, 71 points. This has to be one of the lowest. Their lowest season since 2011-12, I think. And so Nagelsmann paid for it at some point. He paid for the dressing room not being too happy. He paid maybe yeah. for a difficult relationship. They weren't on track to get 71 no, no, points. No, but it doesn't the matter. Way, he, he paid, right. If everything was rosy and good, they would not have sacked him. So it's, there were clear issues there. There were issues there. Gab. You don't sack someone for no reasons. Right. It doesn't mean that those are the reasons to sack him. I don't want to go no, back no, no, through but, the Nagelsmann but, thing. But whether I, it's a good call or not, it doesn't matter. You sack him for a reason. So at some point, someone is responsible for the bad season, whether that can, Nagelsmann, Brazo, Tuchel. Tuchel. Yeah, Tuchel. 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 I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why is Tuchel responsible Tuchel. for the bad season? Because Tuchel lost more games since taking over than um, the, the Nagelsmann had lost in like 18 months uh, but, leading by and something like that. Because Tuchel was brought in to go and rescue the season and he got knocked out badly of two competitions. So to exonerate Tuchel, and I heard you guys say Tuchel comes into the stronger. I, I look, and again, as you know, I am the number one Tuchelista. However, I think in the real world, there has to be a situation where Tuchel has to be held responsible for the way this season ended. Uh, you know, the fact that you can think... cite the 71 yeah. points, um, they wouldn't have had that 71 points if he stayed. He was not on track we... to, for 71 points. Right. He was on track for, for, for far more than that. We don't know. Yeah, but you don't know that. You can't say, like, if Nagelsmann had stayed, they would have won 81 points. We don't know. And you, you can look again at Tuchel against City, where I don't think Bayern were that much, like, weaker than City. 
especially if you look at the expected goals, especially in that second game. The cup, they lost against Freiburg, who had two yeah, one yeah. penalty, one incredible goal, and Bayern had a lot of chances again. I think it's really harsh. I don't know what you think, Jan, but I think it's really harsh to put some of the blame on Tuchel for an average season like that. But, but I think that, yes, if you saw the mandate at that press conference when Tuchel came in, I, I then I, I go with, with Gab in the thing that he will come in to kind of secure them the trouble. I mean that was the that was the propaganda being said. Like he should. Yeah, so true. it's out. So it's out of the cup, out of the Champions League. But you have to see the the big picture here because first of all, someone got to be responsible for a very bad season of Bayern, and it is a traditional Bayern. This is not the first time they're firing a manager. They fired Otto Rehagel before the UEFA Cup final. They took a title away from him, and this guy still can't believe that. It is in his, in his 80s now, so that could happen. So to put a lot of blame on Tuchel, I mean, you can say that he didn't turn the team around as quick as everybody hoped for, but there are clearly... If you want to evaluate this season, you okay, Nagelsmann, done. That happened in football, that you fire the manager. You've seen in England, success or not success, but still, it happened all the time. But the problem is with uh, Salon Hlahamisic, uh, I can't even say, I say Bratso, no, it's easier when I'm uh, enthusiastic about this. Bratso, the recruitment this season hasn't been good enough. When they played yeah. Manchester City, I think it was five of six new players. Only De Ligt played, and they spent a lot of money. So that was his responsibility. Oliver Kahn is ahead of everything. Uh, Bayern Munich have had a terrible season, and they paid the price. Should we take the long discussion about loyalty, long-term thinking, and everything? But that's not Bayern. And if you get into Bayern, that is a part of the thing. So if you're a coach of Bayern, you can't say that, give me time. Because that is the only thing that is luxury at Bayern is time. There is no chance. So Nagelsmann, at that time, should he have done it for the rest of the season? Maybe he should. Would he end up with even more than Tuchel? Maybe he should. But that was not good enough for Bayern. Sorry, Gab. That was not good enough. And he had to I pay agree. the price, Nagelsmann. Um, throwing forward to Bayern, because obviously... I think most people say, well, Lewandowski leaving left them a, a large Lewandowski-shaped hole at, at center forward, one that Mane couldn't fill. Uh, they're going to need to get a center forward. The issue with the young players, too, you know, you spent, you you invested either, some of these were free transfers, but, you know, Masrawi, um, Ryan Gravenberg, yeah. Matisse Tell, who for some reason people in Germany think is the second coming, I, I don't know. Um, all these guys, one of the reasons cited for Nagelsmann um, being let go was, oh, you didn't play Matisse Telmore, you didn't find space for these other players. I, I'm curious now, how does how does he go and approach this? And how does he approach one of my favorite subjects, which is the musiala Muller dichotomy? Because it was a couple of games where he played a 4-1-4-1 system with Kimmich in front of the back four, where it looked kind of like last season's Manchester City, um, where you had Muller and Musiala together. But Muller and Musiala together, plus a center forward, Kimmich on his own in front of the back four. If you're going to have attacking wing backs, yeah. that's really difficult to do, right, Jan? I, yeah, I, and, I and I have a theory, and maybe this is not right, but I have a theory. Because, first of all, we have to understand the environment in Germany. Because every time Bayern loses and Müller is not there, he should have been there and they would have won. Uh, but if they lose and Müller is not there, we don't talk about it. When, when Müller is there, we don't talk about that. He, uh, I asked in, in a German studio, I said, was he in Qatar as well, Müller? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm just wondering, because Müller, this is the position of Müller, and rightly so, he's earned his position. But I think that Tuchel will now start with getting the team younger and sharper. And I'm not sure that Thomas Müller would have a long-term relationship to buy first of all he's old and secondly he has to accept a new role he has to accept what Mats Hummels to be fair to him I wouldn't be critical to Mats Hummels but he accepted his position this season he won't play all games I don't think Nagelsmann was strong enough to do that because well, if you have Musiala there I mean Musiala got to play he's one of the most promising young players in the world and if he doesn't play he has to leave Bayern that is a well, fact it, 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 it's really true to say that I don't want to uh, I just follow up with you for a second there, Jan. Uh, as a former player, right? Because especially somebody like Muller, who's been, been so good for so long, right? There is comes a moment. It'll even come for Cristiano and Messi. Yeah, of course. Maybe it's already yeah. come. 
where you say, you know what, I can't do what I did before. And yet you always tell yourself that you have to be mentally strong, that you can achieve more than what, than what your skills tell you you can achieve. How do you, I want to ask you, how do you handle that dichotomy? Is it something that Tuchel can do on his own? Does he need Hernes's backing? How does Hernes feel about Thomas Muller? And also, what can you do with Thomas Muller? Because Hummels, you could send back to Borussia Dortmund. There's nowhere else for Muller to go unless maybe you make him CEO in space of, you know, send him business school, make him CEO in place of all the cars. And don't well, how do you handle this? What can you do? <laughs> and don't laugh because Thomas Müller will probably be a candidate for that in the next three, four years if it comes to the, uh, the harness way. What is interesting with Bayern, they were lucky with Philipp Lahm that he retired when he did. They were lucky with Bastian Schweinsteiger going to Manchester United. That was like yeah. his golden handshake. He went away. This is difficult. It's very difficult. In my, in my career, I remember Felix Margaret came to me at the end of my Frankfurt time and he said, Jan, you're in an age now you, uh, I will uh, try to get young strikers in. I can't give you any promise of anything. Yeah, I said, that's fine. I'm a part of my career. I will stay on fight for my minutes and I will try as get as many games as I can. But this is hard as better you get. You see that with Ronaldo. You will probably now see that with, with Messi as well, what it will do at the end of uh, his career. So I, this is all up to Thomas Müller, but we have to understand Thomas Müller's position in German football. You have to understand his position at, at Bayern. And we take this for granted because we love the Bundesliga. We follow Bundesliga. But listen, Thomas Tuchel puts Thomas Müller on the bench. What is happening? Bratzo and Oliver Kahn, Oliver Kahn is the CEO, they take him into a meeting in Sevenerstrasse and it's all over the papers that they tell him, just be in there. Can you imagine if Klopp put Nunez on the bench and there was some CEOs of Liverpool take him in, into a meeting and say, listen, we know that you're struggling with Klopp at the moment, but just be patient because you are so important for us. But in, in Germany, we take this, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. So this is Thomas Tuchel's challenge now. What to do with Thomas Tuchel? I think that Manuel Neuer will have his position because he's a goalkeeper. I think that is different. Uh, and but, but it would still be a challenge there as well. What do you do with Nubel? What do you do with Sommer? What do you do with uh, what do you do with a new goalkeeper? Because Manuel Neuer can't play forever. Well, I'm just waiting for us to hear what happened to so, Ulreich. Of course, that's what we're all waiting for. Um, <laughs> But Jules, just for that, Jules. next season is fascinating already to know what Tuchel is going to do. And when we said with Jan earlier, when we were preparing for the show, that it feels like Tuchel is in a strong position because now the club is going to go and get a sporting director to, to replace Salihamidzic. And surely Tuchel will have will be part of that, you would think, or maybe would be consulted at least, because you need a strong relationship between Tuchel and whoever comes in as sporting director with that Max Herber or whoever they, they're going for. And also because Tuchel we said, okay, like, I don't want those guys that you signed with Nagelsmann, that Brazo signed. I don't want Sadio Mane. I don't want him. I don't want him. I don't want him. I don't want Bruno Sa, But I want this profile and this player and et cetera, et cetera. And let's see if they back him up in the summer. But already next season, between the pressure of doing better than this season, what to do with Muller, what to do when New York comes back, and then who's going to come in, who's going to leave the club. If Sadio Mane leaves the club this summer, this is a huge story. It's a massive failure from a club like Bayern not to have been able to accommodate a player of this time. Whether it might be it's his fault, maybe it's the, the club's fault, I don't, I don't know, I don't care. But imagine spending that money on Sadio Mane and then 12 mm. months later thinking, and you know what, just know it didn't and, work out. We're going to sell you at a loss because there's no way they're going to make that money back. I'm likely taking a huge loss, yeah. unless he goes to Saudi Arabia and plays with Cristiano. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.